Hello. Hello. Yeah, shall we start? Yes, sir. Okay. So, um, the next topic we are going to start is nomenclature. of coordination compound. Okay, so nomenclature, like you know, we did in organic chemistry, here we have some rules. Okay, so we'll follow those rules to write down the name of these compounds. Right? So, like if you are going to write down the rules one by one, it will take a lot of time. So, I'll just show you for the reference for now. Okay. And that, that PDF I'll share with you. So, you can copy those notes later on, those points later on. Okay. So, we'll continue with it. Right. So, let me just you know, show you. Just I'm stop, I'm just stop sharing my uh, screen for a while and then I'll come back. Just a second. Uh, Now you see this, these are the rules we have of nomenclature, right? We'll just go through it quickly. And this PDF, it, it, this PDF is for the entire chapter, okay? The entire chapter is given here. Uh, and there are some solved questions also, which you can practice later on when, once we finish the uh, chapter. So I'll share after the session, the entire PDF with you, okay? Here we'll focus just on the rules which is given here. A, B, C, D, all these rules. See, all these rules, if I'm going to dictate you, it takes a lot of time. Okay, that's why I'm skipping this. But these rules, you must write or keep these notes properly if you don't want to write the rules because you have to revise it at times. Okay, see, the first of all, the first rule is very simple. We'll name the compounds like we name the simple salt. Positive part first and then the anion in the last. Like sodium chloride, Na plus will write it first. Sodium and then chloride. Here also, if you have positive part is this, then potassium and then the name of this complex, FeCN6. Okay, That's, that is what written over here. Naming with the complex starts with potassium. Here, the complex cation it is. So we'll write down the name of cation first, that is the complex part. And then we'll write in the last with the space chloride. Okay, the name of this complex starts with the name of complex ion, which is this. Means whatever positive ion is there, we'll write down the name first. K4FeCN6 here, we'll write down the name of the name of this first, uh, what we say, name of ligands first. Okay. First we'll write down the name of ligands, then we metal, then we'll write down the name of the metal. And just after the name of the metal, we'll, we'll write down the oxidation state of the metal in parenthesis. Okay, I'll show you some examples, you'll get it. Okay. If you have multiple ligands, more than one ligands present, then we'll write down the name of ligands in alphabetical sequence, right? That's the basic rule we are following here. But how do we write down the name of ligands? To write down the name of ligands, we have certain rules here, you see. The ligands can be neutral, anionic or cationic. So if it is neutral, we have one particular you know, rule type of name, anionic, one particular type of name, cationic, one particular name. So this you must go through once properly. Okay. See, it is written here. Neutral ligands are named as the molecules. Like you see, C5H5, when it is pyridine, so we'll write on pyridine. C5H5 whole thrice with triphenyl phosphine. No change in this. This one, ethylene diamine. No change in this. Neutral ligands, which are not named as the molecules, are CO as carbonyl, NO as nitrosyl, H2O as aqua, 
and it says amine amine double m must take care of it okay this one point the first point is very important in fact this c the point number c you have to go through properly it's very important right the neutral ligands named as the molecule but these are some different names we have co is carbonyl no is nitrosyl h2o is aqua and this is amine a double m okay not single m double m anionic ligands ending with ide are named by replacing ide with o means ide ka ito ho jayega right ide becomes ito it becomes ato ite i t e becomes ito so suffix o we have to add for anionic ligands okay for anionic ligands right anionic ligands i o suffix you need to add for example you see cl minus is chlorido or chloro chalta hai br minus is bromo or bromido cn minus is cyano o2 minus oxo oh minus hydroxo n3 minus nitrido o2 two minus peroxo o2 h minus per hydroxo s2 minus sulfido like this it is given you can go through once okay so next we'll see okay oh minus hydroxo n2 minus imido and all ligands with the name in in i or it becomes ito by replacing ending e with o as follows carbonate carbonato oxalate oxalato sulfate sulfato like that acetate acetato okay then for positive ligands you see we have third point positive ligands ending with em suffix so hydrazinium nitronium okay nitrosonium no plus okay now this this is the name of the ligand point number c which is different from that we from what we did in the nomenclature previously so this point number c you must take care of now if ligands are present more than one then repetition is indicated by prefix di tri tetra etc however when the name of the ligand includes a number diiperidyl ethylene diamine bis tris tetra kis are used in place of di tri tetra i'll discuss this example in just a second with example you will understand here you will get confused okay if ligand is already contains prefix like ethylene diamine or if it is polydentate ligand then prefix bis tris of char the same thing we'll discuss it more than one type of ligand alphabetical sequence you need to follow after naming the ligand the central metal ion to be named immediately followed by this oxidation state in roman under the brackets as per ipcc okay in parenthesis okay nh2 nh4 2 cu cl4 so nh4 will write down first because always cationic part first ammonium okay four chlorine tetra chloro then cuprate if it is negative if the metal is in negative part negative anion then eight will write down cuprate and then oxidation state of copper two after naming the central metal atom ion which is in the order uh, outer sphere is to, to be named the naming of the sum of the complexes is done as follows as per ipcc okay, okay fine now with example you'll get it see this one k4 fecn6 so positive part is potassium so potassium hexacyano ferrate negative ion so ferrate what is the oxidation state plus 2 so we'll write down plus 2 in the roman potassium hexacyano ferrate you see plus 2 here number 2 k2ptcl6 positive part potassium hexachloro platinate platinate plus 4 is the oxidation state here we'll write down the positive part first this part will name first and in the complex part we'll write down the name of ligand first and then metal so ligand is hexa amine a double m take care hexa amine a double m right cobalt 3 chloride right uh, one more point was there uh, i did not ethylene diamine was a point uh, where we have where we use single m in the spelling mm -hmm. a 
ऑफ ओके आई विल सी दैट नाउ यू सी CrH2O4 Cl2 Cl दिस विल राइट डाउन फर्स्ट टू लिगैंड्स वी हैव हियर सो दिस H2O द नेम इज एक्वा इट इज क्लोरो सो फर्स्ट विल राइट अल्फाबेटिकली एक्वा एंड देन क्लोरो सो टेट्रा एक्वा डाई क्लोरो क्रोमियम ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट ऑफ क्रोमियम इज 3 तो टेट्रा एक्वा डाई क्लोरो क्रोमियम 3 Right, this one. It is amine chloro, right? So diamine double M, tetra chloro, platinum oxidation state is four. Triamine tri chloro cobalt three. Okay, like this fill name. Did you get it? Any doubt in this? Little bit of idea you have. I'll give you some examples now. Okay, we won't go like this. But, but did you get it? This. Four five points that I have discussed. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We will discuss some examples because if you have an example, you won't get it. Okay, let's discuss some examples, and I'll share this PDF. Okay, don't worry. Okay, now suppose the compound is this, which you have to write down the name, uh, and the compound is uh, this one, CO NH three four. then h2o cl bracket close cl this is the first one second one is cu en2 so4 ni CN four two minus write this Done. Okay, I'll do the first one. So positive part first. So first we'll write down uh, the complex part in the first one.
अच्छा वेट सो वी हैव दिस थिंग वन टू थ्री थ्री लिगैंड सो दिस वन इज अमाइन दिस वन इज एक्वा एंड दिस वन इज स्लोडो सो फर्स्ट यू लाइट डाउन ए ए वाला लिगैन राइट सो ए एंड ए अमाइन एक्वा फर्स्ट यू लाइट अमाइन राइट अल्फाबेटिकली सो नेम ऑफ दिस कंपाउंड इज इस कंपाउंड इज टेट्रा अमाइन T E T R A and A double M, not single M. Tetra amine, then aqua for water, then chlorido. You can write or you can write chloro. Cobalt. What is the oxidation state of cobalt? It's minus one. So this one is plus one. This is minus one. This is zero. This is zero, so it is plus two. Yes or no? Cobalt. Then in the bracket, the oxidation state, chloride. Is it fine? Okay. This one I'll do in the last. Wait for it. This one is tetra cyano, tetra cyano nickelic. Nickelic oxidation state of nickel is plus two here, so nickelic two iron because it is not a molecule; it is an iron. So nickelic two iron. Okay. Now this one you see the bistris wala rule. will use over here the name of this uh, ligand is what ethene ethylene diamine or ethene 1,2 diamine okay it is ethene 1,2 diamine so the name of the ligand already contains di term with it like ethene 1,2 di amine so when the name of the ligand contains a term like di tri tetra or like that then for these numbers we do not use again di tri tetra word but we use bis tris tetra kis like that okay so if it is 2 so we'll run for this ligand we'll write on bis okay bracket open ethane 1,2 diamine Ethene one comma two diamine bracket close copper oxidation state of copper is two copper two sulfate Did you understand this? One more point that you have to you know take care of here, that when it is uh, you know when it is uh, uh, amine means monoindent ligand, then we are using double M here. But when it is this uh, polyindent ligand, then we are using single M here. Okay. if the complex part is positive ions and neutrals then there is no special ending we'll write down the name as it is but when the complex is negative ions we'll write down eight suffix like i have written here nickelate other examples also i have shown you it is eight suffix we have added okay got it some more examples i'll show you in a bit this one you do c o e n 
SO4. CO, O, N, O, NH3, SO4. Another one, Li, ALH4. Try these compounds. Yeah, I'll do it. As long as this is okay. This one is the song you doubt. This one. Uh, the name of this compound is ethylene diamine. Right. So for this three, we'll write down tris. We don't write tri here. Because the name itself contains di term. So we'll, don't write tri, we'll write down tris. Open bracket, ethylene. 1 comma 2 diamine with a single M. Cobalt. What is the oxidation state of cobalt here? It is 2. Then space and sulfate. Okay. This one is uh, the oxidation state. If you see, it is 0 and co. NO2, what is the oxidation state here? NO2, what is the charge? Minus, Minus 1. Right? So cobalt will be plus 3. Because it is minus 2. And on the complex, we have plus 2 then. So this one is, it is pentamine. And this one is nitrito O. O and O, it is written. It means oxygen is a donor atom here. So nitrito O will write. If NO2 simply it is written, then nitrogen is the donor atom. Okay. So name of this compound is pentamine. Pentaamine. A double M I E N E. Pentaamine. Then the other ligand is nitrito O. Nitrito O, cobalt, there's no space here, okay? Cobalt, 3, sulfate. LiALH4 is lithium. What we should write the positive part first? Lithium is fine, but tetrahydrido is correct, yes. And lithium and then space, tetra because it is hydride ion, right? So it is negative ion. So hydride I becomes Ido. Tetrahydrido aluminate because of negative ion. Oxidation state is what is the oxidation state? This is three. It is. We have Li plus and ALH4 minus. It is a negative ion. Right? So this, like this, we write down the name. Okay, I'll share that PDF. To solve some more questions, you'll have the idea of it, how to do. Just you need to follow the rules. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Sir, for organic reactions, uh, this gives hydride ion, right? 
Ah. Sir, but uh, the complex doesn't dissociate. So how does it give the hydride ion? Okay, complex. Uh, ha. See, in organic reaction, we have different conditions. No, we are talking. It's not like you cannot break this. Right? It is not like you cannot break this. Yes, sir. What we are talking about, we are talking about that when you dissolve this in water, in aqua solution, then this part retains its identity. So it, I said what that the complex part. Retains its identity in solution, right? Yes, but in organic reaction, we have uh, we have elevated temperature, right? High temperature we are using. We are using this reagent in order to provide hydride ion, correct? So for the for that purpose, we use the necessary condition which is required. Yes, got it. It's just we are talking about it's in solution. It retains its identity. Yes. Yeah. Yes. One second. Okay. Now, in this nomenclature, you see, in some of the question, they'll give you both, uh, you know, part cation and anion part complex. So, in that case, you have to, uh, you know, understand how to write down the name. Suppose we have this, not much important, but we'll see just one example. CrNH3 and the another one we have, um, COCN6. COCN6. Correct? So the name of this compound, I'll write down first. It is hexaamine because always we'll write down the positive part first. So hexaamine. Chromium, chromium oxidation state. You let it be now. Then some space. Hexa amine, hexa cyano, cobalt, cobaltate oxidation state. You see. Okay. So oxidation state. How do you assign? That's the thing, right? What you do, you just find out the total charge. What is the total charge we have? NH3 we have zero, no charge on NH3, and CN has minus one. So total charge is six, like the magnitude is six. So this charge you have to distribute equally on the two metal. So we'll write down three here and three here. This is the name of this compound. Try this one. One more, I'll just give you. Pt. And it's three four. Cu Cl four. Done. So it is tetraamine platinum two 
tetrachloro cuprate 2 is it yeah that's right okay the name is tetraamine tetraamine platinum 2 tetrachloro cuprate 2 okay if you are doing this uh, you know these kind of questions in the exam then you don't have to name this like this okay I would suggest first of all you find out the oxidation state of the metal whether it is both complex or the normal one that we were doing before this right find out the oxidation state first okay especially when you look at the option and if you see the oxidation state differs in all the options then you just find out the ox oxidation state according to that you'll, you can remove the options easily eliminate the options easily okay so, uh, so nomenclature questions basically it's not you know a good idea to solve this this way like you know you find out the name and all these things and like them the name and then compare with the options you can easily eliminate options there okay now next thing is uh, sometimes what we have we have bridging uh, group ligands okay bridge ligands are present i'll show you how it is uh, for example you see this one just we are looking at one example because these things are not at all important okay h2o4 then we have fe and there is a ligand which acts as a bridge here oh oh and it is connected to fe here h2o four times and SO4 like this. SO4 whole twice. SO4 whole twice. So how do we write down the name of this? You can write down this as, you know, uh, like separately this part and this part you can write down. Or you can also write down because you have two bridge like this. So we'll use bridges two. So we'll use die for that. Die, and we'll use a Greek word mu to represent the bridging ligand here. Mu means it is a bridge group ligand. Okay, we have the, these things are written in the rules. Okay, it is not given in that particular PDF because it is not important. Okay, but I'm giving you one just one two example I'm discussing so that you can do it. Hardly I have seen this kind of question they have asked in the exam. Okay, die mu mu represents the bridging group ligand. Okay, mu. And then two hydroxy we have here, right? So di means two hydroxy, mu means bridge. Then we'll write hydroxo, hydroxo. Then we'll write down, we have H2O4, H2O4 twice. So we'll write down bis, bis. The name of this is tetra aqua. Tetra aqua iron oxidation state of iron is <clears throat> you see minus one here, minus one here, minus two into two minus four, so plus four here. Plus four plus two plus six. We'll divide this plus six equally on the two metal. That is three. Okay. Bracket close. Tetra aqua. I'll write down one bracket here also because this is for the Cetra Aqua. No, just a second. No, we have this one. No. One second. Uh, di mu hydroxo, we have done with this. And then this part we'll name it as bis yes, bis tetra aqua. Okay, this tetra aqua iron C and then sulfate. This is the name of this one. Now, 
mu we use a greek letter just to represent the bridging group ligand okay i'll give you one point here one note you write down in this one note you write down right on the bridging ligand the bridging ligand is expressed is expressed by bridging ligand is expressed by greek letter mu repeating i'm repeating myself bridging ligand is expressed by a greek letter mu which is added immediately before the name of the ligand and separated by a hyphen name of the ligand and separated by a hyphen okay no disulfide we don't put disulfide we don't put simply will write down sulfate because uh when you have in red bis bis uh, tetra aqua iron means there are two iron atom present right to balance that we have we sh should require two sulfate so from there you get you got the idea that we'll have two sulfate ion so that is not required so could you just repeat the last part of what you said uh the point that in the, the note right yes sir yeah i'm repeating myself it the bridging ligand is expressed by greek letter mu which is added immediately before the name of the ligand and separated by a hyphen okay okay one more example on this will do and then we'll move on you can have two different bridging ligand also here we have oh oh so i've written di mu hydroxo if you have two different name then you can write down the name of the two like you see this one nh3 nh3 ol4 then we have cobalt nh2 NH2, NO2, cobalt, then NH3, four, and then we have nitrite, NO3, four. Sorry. Try this one. So NH two is in the. Sorry. So what is NH two? NH two. NH two is amide. No, so amide. You can write. NO two is nitrate two. So the bridge is like uh, three center two electron bond kind of thing. Bridge one. Yes, sir. So because it's not a diidentate ligand, no, sir. Yes. So because it's like. Uh, yeah, it's like three center two electron because NH two already has only one lone pair, na? No? 
So yes. it is distributed among the three nucleus and CO CO. Okay. See here we have two uh, this thing or uh, two different bridging group ligand, right? One is amido NH two, other one is nitrito NO two. So we'll write down mu two times here. Okay, so the name of this compound you see, it is nitrito, it is amido. Alphabetically, we'll write this first. So we'll write down mu amido. This means the NH2 group is present as a bridging bridge here between the two metals. Then one more we have, so mu nitrito. Oh, here we have a small n here, right? small n nitrate. Okay, then we have two times here, tetraamine. So we'll write down this open bracket, tetraamine, cobalt. What is the oxidation state? What is the charge? Nitrate. Tell me the charge here. NO3 Three. minus. NO3 minus. So 4 minus. So 4 plus on this, right? Minus 1, minus 1. So plus 6 divided by 2. Plus 3 will have. Sir, we should write nitrito N also. Huh? Nitrito N. No, I and Y will write. Right? Because it's a molecule, no? So no, sir, nitrito N I meant for the bridging ligand. Nitrito. Oh no, see, uh, you can write that's not wrong. But when nitrito you have written, it means it is understood that nitrogen is a donating ligand. Yes. Sir. Right. Understood. So these are some bridging group ligands. Okay, not important. Okay, but. I have given you a bit of test of it. Like if you get, you can easily do this with the help of options, right? But I haven't seen the past five years they have asked questions on this. Okay, fine. So next is we'll start the bonding in coordination compound. Okay, how the bonding takes place in coordination compound? We have half an hour, so we can go with. It. Fine. So write down next <clears throat> bonding in coordination compound. There are different different theories for this. Like we have in normal compounds, I told you VBT hybridization molecular orbital theory. So here also we have different different theory. Okay, we have we have balance bond theory here also. Werner coordination theory we have here. Right, we have crystal field theory, the splitting of orbitals. There are many things. Okay, that we are going to discuss here. So bonding in coordination compound. So the very first attempt to explain the bonding in coordination compound is done by Werner's, Werner, and we call it as Werner's coordination theory. Okay, write down into this. It explains the property and the structure it explains the property and the structure of various coordination compound various coordination compound
वन सेकेंड या राइट डाउन द मेन पॉस्टुलेट ऑफ दिस थियरी आर ओके द फर्स्ट पॉइंट यू राइट डाउन अकॉर्डिंग टू वर्नर्स कॉर्डिनेशन थियरी द फर्स्ट पॉइंट इन दिस फर्स्ट पॉस्टुलेट एवरी एलिमेंट मेटल मीन्स एवरी एलिमेंट two types of valency two types of valencies that is we'll have a primary valency primary valency and Uh, first, you write on two points into this primary valency, and we have, we also have one more. You can write down three, four lines after three, four, five lines. You can write down secondary valency. These are the two valencies we have in coordination complex, primary and secondary. Write down primary valency. It corresponds to. it corresponds to the oxidation state of the central atom cma right now central metal atom it corresponds to the oxidation state of the central metal atom and it is shown by a dotted line and it is shown by dotted line next point in this you write down the primary valency is satisfied by is satisfied by the neutral mole sorry satisfied by the negative ions negative ions such as cl minus so4 minus sulfate ion etc sir negative uh the primary valencies are satisfied by the negative ions cl minus sulfate ions all those things okay so in the complex if the negative ion is present that those negative ions only negative ions okay those negative ions satisfies the primary valency and we represent the negative ions with the dotted line because i have given you that it is represented by the dotted line okay so negative ion is represented by dotted i'll i'll draw the structure also okay secondary valency you write down it corresponds to the coordination number it corresponds to the coordination number of the central metal atom or ion point wise write down okay first point i've given you second point it satisfies by it satisfies by either neutral molecules or negative ions either neutral molecules or negative ions what do you like what is the meaning of satisfies by i'll discuss that in the last first you write down the notes satisfies by the neutral molecules or negative ions till now you see the negative ion satisfies both kind of valencies primary as well as secondary okay next one 
Sir, can you repeat, repeat the first point? First point. Uh, it yes. corresponds to the coordination number of the central metal atom or ion. Right? So this one is coordination number. Okay, see this. This one is uh, this one is coordination number. But this one is the oxidation state of the metal. Right? I, second point I said satisfies by other negative ion or neutral molecules. It is satisfied by only negative ions. Okay? It is represented by solid line like this. This one is represented by dotted line like this. Write down. It is represented by thick lines or solid lines you can write. Next point. Secondary valency are directional. I did not give you this point there. Okay, fine. Write it down. This is directional. You have to place this in a fixed direction. Okay, with a fixed angle. Secondary valency valencies are directional. Primary valency is non-directional. Non-directional. This one is directional. And because of this only, the isomerism is possible in coordination compound. Okay? Because you have to you have to place the atoms, ligands around the central metal, uh, metal atom in a fixed direction, at a fixed angle. That's why it shows isomerism. One more point here is uh, this primary valency, it is it is because of the ionic bond. It is the ionic bond. The primary valency means the ions which are involved. We have ionic bond here in primary valency. But in this one, we have coordinate bond. Secondary valency, we have coordinate bond. Yes, right. Non ionizable also. You can say that. Sir, you said that primary valencies are satisfied only by negative ions, no, sir? Yes, right. Sir, but then in uh, complexes like K4, FeCN6 or something, K potassium, which is positive ion, is satisfying the primary valency, no, sir? No, it's not like that. I'll take one example, Tripan. A few minutes. Okay, I'll take one example. Okay. Okay. Ah, next. See, because of this directional in nature, so those uh, you know, ligands which satisfies the secondary valency, you have to place this in a different direction, in a fixed direction. And that's why we'll have a coordination polyhedra. You have a, have a shape of it. Right? That we call it as tetrahedral geometry or square planar geometry and all those. That comes because of this directional nature of secondary valency. Okay. Now, these are the few properties you should keep in mind that primary is ionic bond, oxidation state, non-directional dot line, secondary valency is coordination number, coordinate bond, thick line, and directional in nature. Now, we can understand this with uh, one example. I'll just write down this example here. Uh, suppose I'm taking an example of CO NH3 6 Cl3 this one okay could you tell me the primary valency for this one what is the primary valency what is the secondary valency What is primary valency? We have to check oxidation state. Check the oxidation state. 
न्यूट्रल मॉलिक्यूल and this satisfy the secondary valency because secondary valency is six only six molecule satisfies this right so we have six nh3 which is represented by the thick line one coordinate bond This is six n is three, okay, by the thick line. This three chlorine, which is present outside and ionizable, this is because this cannot ionize. We cannot break this complex, right? This is ionizable, so it is represented by the dotted line, which is this one, two. This is this molecule. Primary valency and secondary valency. Now, what I'll do? I'll do one change in this. Uh, suppose I am taking this one. C O N H three. CO and its three five CL and then CL two. Number of in this molecule, number of ionizable chlorine atom is what. Is three, which is outside the complex, right? It's three only. In this one, again, if you count the primary valency, primary valency is the oxidation is is the oxidation state that is three only, right? And secondary valency is again six, right? so it is same here this chlorine is a negative ion it has a dual role here it satisfies primary valencies as well as the secondary valency right it has a dual role and number of ionizable chlorine atom is what tell me guys number of ionizable chlorine atom 2 chlorine atom is 2 the ion which is performing dual behavior that is not ionizable because it is inside the square bracket we cannot ionize the uh, chlorine atom which is present inside the square bracket okay the so number of ionizable chlorine atom is 2 fine chalega did you get it now when you draw the structure of it so how do we draw it you see um, we'll take a chlor cobalt here in the center i'll just write down a line here like this okay and it's three and let's see consider this as the coordinate only and let's see we have only five right so we'll have this and uh, one and it's three here three okay then four and then five and here we have suppose one chlorine so dotted line is for primary valency chlorine and since the chlorine atom satisfies both valency so there is a one thick line also means it satisfies both valencies and then we have one primary valency here and one primary valency here so 
this one satisfies both valency right down here satisfies both primary valency and secondary valency understood excuse me sir yeah Uh, sir, in the first structure, while writing the chlorine atoms, does it uh, like uh, show how should we know like we, between which ammonia molecule should we write the chlorine and all? Anywhere you place, it is non-directional. It doesn't matter. Okay, yes, sir. Wherever you feel like, कर दो वहाँ पे कुछ नहीं चाहिए. It's non-directional, no. So there's no way like no कहीं भी लग सकते. But for this, it is important. and because of this only it has octahedral geometry isliye dekho maine isko thoda octahedrally place karne ko kuch kiya yahan right square and then one top and one in the bottom right yes these are the you know uh, structure we are trying to draw but but yes the dotted line you can place anywhere not a problem understood this one now i'll take one more example in this same one this one you see um co nh3 4 cl2 and one chlorine atom outside so if you count here the primary valency is again 3 and secondary valency is again 6 here and the structure is 1 2 3 4 4 nh3 and we have two chlorine atom which has the dual role right so one chlorine and then one chlorine will have so number of ionizable chlorine is only this one right red say i will circle it ionizable chlorine is only this one Correct. We'll take one more. The same thing. We'll place all the chlorine atom inside. CO NH three Cl three like this. So here also we have the same thing. Primary valency is three oxidation state. Secondary valency is coordination number. when you draw the structure here the structure is this co and it's 3 and it's 3 and chlorine is here 1 2 Dual behavior, so both signs will drop. Chlorine, chlorine, and chlorine, and none of the chlorine atom is ionizable. Number of ionizable chlorine atom is zero. Number of ionizable chlorine atom is only one so the chlorine and nh3 have to be alternate sorry so the chlorine and nh3 have to be alternate no 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 see is don't try see just you try to understand that how do we represent secondary and primary valence a structure ko bhi ignore kar do a structure will do once we finish the valence bond okay wahan pe hum log dekhenge what is the hybridization we are getting and according to that what should be the geometry and how, what is the placement of uh, this thing um, ligands okay yes so this ye coordinate uh, coordination number is 6 and coordination number 6 ka geometry is octahedral 
that I'm telling you. Okay. Kaise hota hai? We'll discuss that. Okay. So, yes, tetrahedral, like octahedrally, you have to place. That is it. Yes, sir. Okay. So this is the structure. Now, K four F C N six. May we have six uh, cyanide ion, right? So three. Uh, the oxidation state is two. Triple. Yes, sir. So those cyanide ion जो होगा वो dual behavior होगा. Okay, sir. Understood. Got it? Yes, sir. Okay. Now on this one last thing we'll discuss. Okay. अब इसमें एक question like they ask about the molar conductivity of these ions. ऐसे करके they'll give you four or five options and they'll ask you to arrange them in molar conductivity. Molar conductivity we know it depends upon what. it depends upon the number of ions correct number of ions in solution right so we'll see how many ionizable protein atom is there correct the so first one how many ionizable protein atom how many ions will get in the first case this one acha after this how many ions will get in the first in this case you see in this case Four ions. We'll get four ions. Correct, because we have three Cl minus and one this other complex. Correct. This positive and this three is here. Four ions will get here. Here we we'll get three, and then we can count the others also. Right. So the molar conductivity will be maximum for this one, then this one, and then we can go for the other two. Did you get my point? right so number of ions you count according to that molar conductivity you can compare they can also give you like this like this one it reacts with agno3 like the aisa kuch ho plus agno3 so in which of this the precipitate forms or where we get the maximum precipitation so here we get 3 moles of agcl precipitation here we get only 2 agcl then Only ages here. In the last one, we have no precipitation. So precipitation-based question also they ask in this. You just need to keep in mind the ions which are present, atoms which are present outside the square bracket are ionizable, and according to that only we consider the reaction or the number of ions that we get in the solution. Understood my point? So this was this is the coordination theory. He said what that there are you know two types of valencies and neutral ions. He talks about oxidation state, coordination number, and many things. But there are few drawbacks also in this theory. He could not explain why the secondary valency is directional, right? The optical properties of molecules he could not explain. That's the one drawback. Okay, so write down the drawback of Werner's coordination theory. The drawback of Werner coordination theory. He could not explain. He could not explain the magnetic and optical properties of the complex. The magnetic and optical properties of the complex. Okay. Main drawback is this only. One more drawback was there that he again could not explain why only certain elements shows remarkable properties towards forming the complex, the coordination complex. Okay. But the main thing is this only. He could not explain the. Uh, the optical properties means why the secondary valencies are directional. He could not explain that, and the magnetic properties means obviously there are number of electrons, unpaired electrons were there, right? So now to overcome this these problems, these drawbacks, we got another theory. That is, we have after this valence bond theory (VBT), then we have crystal field theory, right? CFT, ligand ligand field theory. We have okay. Molecular orbital theory also we have into this one. So there are many theories after this one. 
okay but our syllabus is we have to do only bbt and cft that is valence bond theory and crystal field theory right so after valence bond theory you will be able to understand the structure of the molecule ki hybridization kya ho raha hai and according to that what could be the structure of the molecule and how the elements you know the ligands are placed around the central metal atom in order to in the structure okay so this uh, bbt we'll discuss in the next class right we don't have time now i could not i can't start it right i would i uh, know request all of you that chemical bonding i have explained the valence bond theory that you must go through once before the next session understood guys yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. okay fine so we'll wind up the session here see you in the next class guys thank you thank you sir 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 thank you sir, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.